This is an introduction video for the Tripoli 425 lab. One of the things you'll find out as you start this lab is that you're going to run into a lot of new things you haven't heard before, and there are a lot of components to the lab. So you'll be doing stuff with schematics, with layouts, with netlists. These are things you've probably heard already. Um, some new things you'll run into, uh, possibly new. It'll be uh, HSPICE, star RC, DRC, LVS, uh, possibly C scope. Uh, a lot of new things. And what I found when I took the course is it's a little bit confusing at first to kind of keep track of all the different programs you're using, how they work together, and what they're doing. So the purpose of this video is to kind of bring all this, hopefully bring all this together for you guys. So the, the main goal of your labs is you're going to end up creating a layout. So this is an example of a layout, and this is something that could conceivably be uh, fabricated. So the different colors you're seeing are basically different la uh, layers of the semiconductor. This is an example of a simple uh, inverter in this case. Now, the technology we use is uh, an educational technology, so you couldn't actually send this to a fab, but it's pretty representative of what you would actually be working uh, on with a, a real technology. So most of this in the lab comes down to two things, which is stuff related to schematics and stuff related to layouts. And I'm going to break that down for you, for you guys here. So the, the first thing you guys are going to do for the labs is you're going to design a schematic. And this will be done in cadence. And you'll end up with something that looks like this. In this case, again, a simple inverter. If you've taken uh, Tripoli 335 at ASU, you will have already had some experience with cadence. So this shouldn't necessarily be anything new for you. Once you've done that, you're going to export a netlist for the schematic, which is going to be done in cadence. And the result of that is you're going to get a what's called an SP file. It's essentially just a text file, which includes the information about your schematic. Uh, with that netlist, you're going to run a program called HSPICE through the command window, and this will simulate your schematic based on how you uh, what you tell it to simulate. Now, this, is, this may seem new, doing this stuff through the command window, um, but it's, if you in 335 or another course used uh, Spectre or ran simulations in Cadence using the GUI, then you're doing all this. This is all being done behind the scenes. So Cadence uh, basically will create a netlist and will simulate this all in Spice anyway, but now we're actually doing it through the command window which ends up being a lot more versatile. So this is an example of using the command window and running uh, an HSPICE job. So once you've simulated an HSPICE, you're going to want to view the results of your simulation. And this comes in uh, two basic flavors, one being in HSPICE, when you create your test bench, you can tell it to look for certain things to make certain calculations. So if, for instance, you're looking for the rise or fall time of your inverter, you can tell HSPICE to calculate that. And that'll be done in the command window. As you see here on the left, it'll, uh, it'll show you the results of the calculation. In addition to that, we'll also want to look at waveforms. But that's going to be done with a separate program, which uses the files that HSPICE outputs. So that's the basic process flow you're going to do for the schematic side of things. And once you're done with that, then you're going to start working on the layout, which is similar but has a few extra complications. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to design your layout. An example of that is the one like I showed earlier of this inverter. Now, once you've designed the layout, uh, you're going to do something called a design rule check. And that's what the DRC stands for. And essentially, all this is is for any given technology, there are certain rules based on what the, uh, the, the fab can produce. So for instance, 
let's say you have um, two lines of metal in your layout and they can't be within, you know, let's say 0.5 micrometers of one another. And the design rule check, basically you're gonna provide cadence with a rules file and it'll check to make sure your layout meets these, um, meets these design rules. And this here is just a screenshot of the, the tool you're gonna, be use, you're gonna be using to do that, which is something called uh, Hercules. Now, once you've made sure that your design meets these rules, the next thing you're gonna do is something called layout versus schematic, or uh, LVS. So at this point, we've made sure that, that we can manufacture this chip that we've designed, but we don't have any idea if it actually performs the function that we designed it to do. So that's where LVS comes in, is we can make sure our design matches our schematic. And I drew the arrow like this because I wanted to emphasize that when you're doing this, you're gonna be comparing your layout and cadence to the netlist that you've exported from your schematic. So you won't be comparing it to the schematic directly, but rather to its netlist. And that's important because let's say you go back and change something on your schematic, but don't re-export your netlist, then you're gonna be comparing your layout to something uh, outdated. And this is, again, same screenshot, you're also gonna be running LVS through Hercules. All right, so now that we've made sure our design meets the rules, we've made sure that it matches our schematic, we're going to uh, export our netlist. And because there's a little more involved with exporting a layout netlist, for instance, there are different parasitics that you may or may uh, not want to ignore, we have another tool, and that's something called star RC, which allows us to extract the, uh, the parasitics that we want and generate a netlist. And this is a screenshot of what uh, that star RC looks like. Now at that point, after you've exported the netlist with star RC, everything is basically the same as what you did with the schematic. You now have a netlist and you can simulate it in HSpice and then you can look at the results of your simulation in much the same way. Uh, one thing I wanted to emphasize also is that these, uh, the top stuff you see up here is all done in cadence. So there, so for instance, the DRC and LVS is done in Hercules, which is basically like an add-on to cadence, as well as star RC, which is its own add-on to cadence. Whereas all this stuff down here is gonna be done uh, separately through the, the command window. All right, uh, one last thing I wanted to bring up, this is kind of a specific thing, but it's important because it can get a little bit confusing, is these uh, two things you see here that with the uh, MM0 and MM1, those, this is your netlist, and this represents transistors in that netlist. Um, you'll notice that there is an X before them. When you export this netlist, from Cadence, that X will not be there. Uh, you have to add this in yourself whenever you run HSpice. Uh, so when you get to this stage here, you're gonna be wanting to have that X. However, when you do your LVS, your layout versus schematic, which is going to use that netlist, you do not want to have that X there. Uh, and that's important mostly because it your LVS won't work if there's an X there, and your HSpice won't work if there's not an X there. So you just have to keep keep that in mind because that's a, an issue that always comes up and uh, it helps to know where you use it and where you don't want to use it. Um, so that, that was all I had. Uh, there's a lot more details that you guys are going to find out, um, but I was hoping that this kind of uh, big picture view of the lab would be helpful. All right, thanks.